Servus Männer, it's Red Pill Germany again. You can still remember, I think, that there were three big local elections recently in the eastern half of Germany, in Brandenburg, in Thüringen and in Sachsen. I reported on these elections, of course, and now some time has passed. And I want to give you an update of how the situation in our eastern states has changed since then and what parties might form coalitions soon together. As you might still remember from these videos, and if you are interested in this topic, I urge you to watch them, the outcomes did not really make it easy for possible coalitions to be formed. As you know, for example, all the other parties said that they will not form a coalition with the AFD. The only actual opposition party in Germany, the only democratic patriotic party in Germany. And many parties have some reservations when it comes to the communist party Die Linke, which was once the state party of the Soviet Republic GDR. Today, the 9th of November, is actually a day that has a lot of historical significance in Germany. On this day, a lot of things happened, some things very understandable, some things very joyous, some things not so nice. But nowadays, the 9th of November is important, of course, because in 1989, the Berlin Wall fell on this day. So I think that it is quite fitting that I can give you an update on three very important central German federal states on this historical day. So in this video, I want to give you an update on the current situation, starting from the most clear outcome, which is Brandenburg. Then I will cover Saxony and in the end, the most interesting case, I think, Thüringen. After that, of course, as always, I will give you my own opinion after stating the facts and also give you a little outlook that I find plausible and very likely. But before I start, I want to briefly thank all my subscribers, all my supporters, everyone who comments under my videos or likes them, but especially those who spread them and share them with people who might be interested. As you all know, YouTube is promoting at the moment state media and corporate media and not so much independent creators. It has not so much to do with political or right-winged or left-winged. It is actually more an independent creator thing. Uh, just as a little side note, I have even heard of a channel that makes cat videos for a long time already. The most innocent thing that you can imagine. And even he noticed that his traffic and his growth was more than cut in half since recent changes of YouTube algorithms and policies have gone into effect. So thank you all very, very much. And if you want to, you can support me on Patreon or on Subscribestar. And also, I'm close to reaching a thousand subscribers on BitChute also. Please check out my BitChute channel as well. So, but now let's jump right in. Brandenburg. You remember that the big winner of the election, relatively at least, was the AFD, of course. But since everybody, as I said, is saying that they're not forming a coalition with them, the AFD is basically the pariah party of Germany. None of the establishment parties wants to talk to them. So this is why there were basically two options. First, a red-red-green coalition, that is the commies, the social democrats and the green party. And then also the so-called Kenya party. And that is, of course, after the national colors of Kenya, that is black, red and green. And that is the Angela Merkel CDU, the social democrats and the green party. This constellation would have a bigger majority in parliament than red red green and this is why the old and the new governor Mr. Wojtke from the SPD decided for this alternative. Red red green is much more comfortable for them in the eastern part of the republic of course because there are already coalitions like that in Berlin for example but also the still current government of Thüringen is of that color combination. But in Brandenburg after this election they would only have had one seat more than the simple majority and that is a paper thin margin. And this Kenya coalition where you exchange the commie party for the Angela Merkel cuck party they have a much bigger majority I think it's five seats or something and that is of course much better. 
it makes for a much more stable government then. So this is actually understandable. But at the same time, a coalition of this type is very unstable, very volatile and nothing gets done. We can observe that, for example, in the state of Sachsen-Anhalt, that is also a central German state. Here we have this kind of Kenya coalition for quite a while and they are actually at each other's throat more than they are actually solving the problems of the people there or that they could defend themselves against the opposition. It is a coalition that is characterized by infighting and by mutually exclusive goals and priorities of the three partners in this coalition. I think open borders and globalism is probably the only common denominator and that they want to protect Germany from the evil AFD. But when it comes to all other questions that they need to settle or legislation that they need to pass, they actually can't agree on anything. And this, of course, makes for very, very bad lowest common denominator policies and the people, as a consequence, become more and more fed up and upset about this government. In the mid to long term, this will only strengthen the AFD, of course. The AFD must only get the message across that they are the only party that is actually caring about the interests and the future, the safety and the prosperity of German families. The other parties basically have the interests of foreigners in mind. All right, moving over to the state of Saxony. As I reported in a previous video about the campaign of Mr. Kretschmer, the current governor of Saxony. Now he is a CDU guy and he was very, very angry and became emotional in one situation on the campaign trail. And then I think in a fit of rage, he said what he normally shouldn't have said. He said the Green Party will be in government. That I can promise you. And then he added some other very nasty things that I cannot really repeat on YouTube. Very filthy and foul language. And of course, the state media and the corporate mainstream media did not really report on this, but I had to pull this information from a independent blog. And you can say what you will about him, but he kept his promise. Um, now the Green Party, the Social Democrats and the CDU, so again the same Kenya coalition, they are starting coalition talks right now. So they're not really done like in Brandenburg, but they're starting negotiations. And it is very clear to me that this is actually what will happen. Because if you look at the results, again, the AFD is the very, very big winner here. Once again, there is not much much else possible really. So of course what is true for Sachsen-Anhalt and for Brandenburg will also be true for Sachsen of course. This Kenya coalition is very very volatile, very unstable and will help the AFD even more. If you are not from Germany or from central Germany, maybe you don't really know this, but let me tell you, they also had something called the block parties back then in the Soviet Republic. That means that the SED, the state party that is now called Die Linke, was of course not the only party. You could vote for other parties too, but they could not have real power, could have nothing to say in parliament. In English, I think another word is satellite party. And this is a common phenomenon in authoritarian regimes. They are a one-party system but they want to mask the fact that there is a one-party system that there is a state party and instead they sometimes found themselves these satellite parties to fake diversity in parliament basically and this is more or less the impression that people in central germany are getting right now because all the parties all of them really are banding together and they are not really allowing for any discourse or any alternatives in the most vital questions of politics at the moment. So of course historically these have been independent parties of course but for all practical considerations they act exactly like block parties under a state party in a totalitarian regime. And of course the people of central Germany know this all too well and it seems all too familiar to them. And this is exactly the angle that the AFD needs to attack right now. But of course they don't need me to tell them that, they already know that. 
All right, so now we are coming to the most interesting part and that is Thuringia Thüringen. So here the Liberal Party, the FDP, is actually in Parliament. That was not clear for a quite long time. But after proper recounting of the votes with a paper-thin margin, the Liberals actually made it into Parliament. Bravo! And as you can see, the only possible coalition without the AFD would be a coalition between the Commie Party and the CDU. And I said this would never happen, but let's see. So in this stalemate, in this deadlock situation, there were several things that happened at the same time. Many voices from the globalist mainstream, of course, were approaching the CDU head, who was re-elected, by the way, as the head of the CDU in Thüringen. Yeah, so many people approached Mr. Moring and they said, come on, the lefty party in Thüringen is not really a commie party anymore. It's actually a conservative party and it is okay to form a coalition with them. This came also in a very explicit form, for example, from our SPD president, so the president of Germany, who is from the SPD, Mr. Steinmeier. And he is normally supposed to stay neutral on these things, but he actually tried to influence the decisions in Thüringen, which I find outrageous, actually. But the problem is that the CDU has declared on the federal level, binding for all CDU members in Germany, that they won't have co coalitions with the AFD or with Die Linke. And that means then that the general secretary of the CDU, Mr. Zimiak, reprimanded Mr. Moring not to have talks with the Commie Party under all circumstances. And it is almost amusing that now that this was clear that the CDU would never allow this anyway, that afterwards the Commie Party actually came along and said that they will not have discussions with the CDU anymore because Mr. Moring apparently made details from mails he received or messages he received public and so Mr. Moring is not longer a trusted negotiation partner for the Commie Party. Think of this face-saving maneuver what you will, especially after the CDU had already declared that there won't be a coalition. Much more interesting, however, is that there are 17 renegade CDU parliamentarians now who actually are in favor of starting negotiations with the AFD. Not to form a direct coalition, but in the context of tolerating a CDU minority government. So if I understood things correctly, the idea would be that the CDU would form a coalition with all the other parties, but the AFD and the Commie Party and the AFD would tolerate that. So that means on all legislation and all votes, this coalition would have to organize majorities vote by vote from instance to instance. But the CDU actually declared that also these gray areas are not allowed. That means they don't even want to have a minority government that is tolerated by the AFD. This is how much they hate the AFD. So Mr. Zimiak, our Polish friend in the CDU, has then said that um, these people are insane. So it is not only our Polish-German friends, it is also the advocacy group of a very significant and quite influential Middle Eastern immigrant group here in Germany that has voiced its concerns towards this plan. So I think you don't have to be a genius to see that if the CDU is actually respecting the federal level decisions of the party, the decrees of non-cooperation with the lefty party and the AFD, that then there is no possible coalition for the state of Thüringen. And to be honest here, I also don't know what would happen then. I mentioned it in my previous video on Thüringen that in such a case, the current governor and his cabinet will stay in office as an acting government, so to speak, but he cannot dismiss or appoint new ministers, new secretaries. So now you have the basic facts and I will keep you updated in the future on these events, of course. So I actually ended up already telling you in the course of this video a little bit about my opinions here or actually how I see the future. 
for these Kenya coalitions. It is not a controversial opinion at all. It is actually just what we can observe in Sachsen-Anhalt, as I said, what you can see there, for example. You can even read that in the mainstream newspapers that the coalitions there are arguing with each other a lot, the coalition parties, that is, And what people on the left are criticizing, that there is actually a lot of collaboration and a lot of friendly exchange between some CDU members of parliament and some AFD members. And I think this is just what happens if you have the rank and file of the party. I don't mean the party elite of the CDU. I'm not talking about the circle of devoted paladins around Angela Merkel. No, I talk about the rank and file of the ordinary CDU members. They have much more in common with the AFD and they are frustrated to the extreme with their loony Green Party coalition partners. And isn't it nice to have a beer or a cup of coffee with a common sense based AFD member? And then as you start talking, you find out that it would be so much easier to have a coalition with someone whose basic values you share. And these are, of course, the classical German virtues. A stable currency, protected borders and a safe and orderly country with a thriving industry and strong craftsmanship. All of these nice things that the left in Germany hate so much. So at least for Brandenburg and Sachsen, this is of course my prediction for the future that this Kenya coalition will look a little bit like the bloc party system of the Eastern Soviet Republic GDR and that this will drive the CDU members, the CDU voters, but all the citizens or many citizens, let's say, in these states closer to the AFD. And if the AFD will play their cards right, they will actually be able to win over voters and show to the people that they are not the grotesque caricature that is presented to the citizens in Germany by the state media, but they are upstanding citizens and just ordinary German people who want the best for their nation. And as for Thüringen, at this moment I gave you the facts, but I really cannot tell you what side will give in, because As I told you, with the decree of non-cooperation from the side of the CDU, but in the case of the AFD also from all of the other parties, there is no possible coalition. So I think it will be a minority government of some sort. The question is whether the AFD or the commie party will be the one that will be the tolerating part. And towards the end, I want to say that until recently, it was the former SED, the Commie Party Die Linke, which was actually considered as the Eastern German Party, the party that is special for Eastern Germany, that is not so significant in the West, but more in the East. And they understood themselves also as the advocates of Eastern Germans to a certain degree. But nowadays, the young urban communist youths in western germany they also vote for this party and in the east as you have seen the afd became much stronger much stronger than in the west which means that the afd also gets the role of eastern german advocacy right now and also because they are stronger in those eastern federal states that means on the federal level of the afd party Eastern German people and Eastern German groups will become more influential as of right now. But this is a topic for another video. I want to keep it at that for today. This was quite long enough. I hope you found this informative and I also hope you will share this video with people who might be interested in these issues. Thank you all guys for watching. Be safe wherever you may be. Servus Kameraden.